So I want to talk about relationships right now. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, where I grew up, which was some of Kansas, Ohio, Texas, and Georgia in the U.S., I've lived on kind of a rural farm, but it was like, mostly when I was there, it was just my grandfather and I going and doing farm stuff, like rounding up cattle, uh, growing hay, cutting it, swathing it, baling it, moving things around the tractor, or welding, or whatever. Like, it was just me and him that was the point. So I didn't really get to experience what a, bu a diversity of people there, but I did like meet all his friends, and I, I even made a few friends, but for the most part, when I was there, it was such a brief time that I just wanted to spend time with my grandfather. Um, and that's kind of been my life, like I jump around through planes and stuff, so with relationships, for me, I'm so used to having just like me and somebody else, because my parents divorced when I was three, so it was like with my dad, with my mom, I go see my grandfather, like it's just one. Not really that much of like large family unions, I mean, we had some, but it was all, it was like a whole nother generation, really. It was. Uh, like my great grandparents and their kids, like my uncles and aunts. Like it's just a whole group of people that live in this one kind of smaller Kansas town. Um, so I don't know. It was just weird. It was a little hard to fully connect because I had so many experiences that they didn't, and they had an entire lifetime of experiences in that little community that I just don't. So it was. It was just I don't know. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just that I'm weird and have trouble connecting, or maybe it was like that. But then also, like, the, my step-family in Ohio, like, it was hard to connect to them because a lot of them, just like, again, it's a small town, and they've got their own, I don't know, that's their little world, and they like talking about it, and I just don't. It bored me. And I'm trying to decide if, uh, more objectively, which I don't even know if I can do, but that, uh, is it that I'm... I have difficulty connecting with people because sometimes I worry about that, but that's also something I'm trying to work through, like deciding if that's the case or if I've just been surrounded so many times and for such length of my life with people that I don't really, I don't know, I just, they're not like super, yeah, because a lot of times, especially in suburbia, oh God, like realistically, I don't ever want to live in suburbia ever again, like I don't. I don't enjoy it, it's, I'm kind of in there right now, and it's, it's just not, like, it's a bunch of people that have such limited uh, diversity that they focus in on little tiny things within the, the, the small amount of diversity that is their community, and it's stupid. That's where you get things like the Homeowners Association or uh, Cops Profiling. Like, just last night, I got pulled over, and this cop was like, oh, your, uh, your tag doesn't match the vehicle. Bullshit. Yes, it does. What the fuck are you talking about? And, you know, I, I'm i not gonna say that for sure 100% he was profiling, because my car looks kind of shitty. It's like, it has, it's an old 1989 Honda Civic, and it's, like, it was blue, and then the hippie I bought it from spray painted it white. He literally was a hippie, he lived in a VW bus van. <laughs> uh, but he spray painted it white, and a lot of it's coming off, so it just looks really crappy. And I think, I, well I know, I've been profiled multiple times by people thinking that I was like, I don't know if they thought I was a Mexican worker or like what, I have no idea. But I'm not saying that I know what it's like to live that life or like to be that 100% all the time, because I don't, like I, I can't, I'm, I'm a straight white male living in suburbia, like no. But I will say that just the fact that my car is different has led to me being pulled over multiple times, people accusing me of having marijuana in the car, even though, no, I don't. And just all this other stuff, getting pulled over, getting taken, I mean, it just sucks. That's a whole tangent. Um, <laughs> back to relationships, though. The point is, is that living in this community, it's very draining on me because I don't, I don't click with that mentality. I don't like being keep up with the Joneses. I have, because of, you know, being in so many different areas from the time I was three, I really have a sense of how different life can be if you're just geographically in a different location. And that's only in the U.S. Like, you've got the whole world. So, if 
you live in Bulgaria, it's very different than if you live in, uh, um, let's say, South America or Canada or Australia. Like, they're just all different places. Tokyo, completely different. Like, so my point is, is that our relationships with each other, how has that affected me where I've lived? Like, am I just sort of like my personality mixed with my experiences that are just different than a lot of what a lot of other people have? Does that make me less able to connect? I don't know. Like, does too much knowledge affect how you connect to people? And then also, suburbia is taught me this other thing, especially with the idea of like patriarchy or, or heter heteronormativity. It's just this idea that there's a certain way things are supposed to go and that's sort of beat into your head. So you think, okay, especially in like Disney movies and stuff, okay, you're supposed to get married and live this life with kids and go to college and get a job and like all that. But that's not, I've never really, like I've thought as a child, well if I ever have kids I'm gonna do things this way or that way based on something that happened to me as a kid and I didn't like it so I wanted to do it differently. But it was never, the thought was never first that oh I would really like to have kids. That's never been a thought and I don't know that I really ever, I really do at all now. Partially because I don't like, I'm noticing how much of children everyone is. And okay so back to relationships though, I feel like with relationships you're, you're supposed to uh, uh, you're supposed to connect. You, like, no matter if it's a friendship, no matter if it's uh, someone you're dating, no matter if it's family, like, when you choose to let somebody in, there should be a connection. There should be honesty and, and just being yourself. And I, sometimes I feel like I, there's parts of me that I can't fully let in. I don't know if that's from, like, my friend growing up was deaf, and so that affected, like, there's just, when you grow up without one of your senses, especially hearing, like it's, it's there's just things you miss out on. There's there's parts of uh, relationships that you don't have, and so between that and then like, my mom uh, had a nerve disorder and had to be on heavy pain medication for a long time, like 14 years. So like I was never able to hug her even without causing immense pain. Or um, and all the have taking so many heavy painkillers like that really. It just fucks with your head. It makes you foggy. It makes you loopy. And I don't know. I don't know what that's done to me. And I don't want to be a victim of my circumstance. I want to be able to fully connect with people. I want to be able to have relationships and know that no matter what, my relationships, not dating, not friends, but all of them, are equal. And then there's just some people that I also have sex with. That's like another aspect of the relationship. But as far as everything else, it's on equal ground. So like my best friend is family, just as much as somebody that I'm dating is family. Like I'm able to, I want to be able to be completely open and honest with both equally. And I feel like suburbia teaches you that no, you're supposed to be like you and this other person, and it's you know two against the world. And that's insane. I, that Because what you're doing essentially is you're saying, okay, you and I, we're going to be together, we're going to be so close, and then statistically that's not going to work out. And so you're going to rip that relationship apart, and then you're left so much pain and hurt. It, like, ugh, that sucks. I, and I've had, so about a year ago I broke up with, or I, I, my girlfriend and I broke up, and uh, that really impacted me a lot more than I thought it would. Not that I didn't care, not that I wasn't connected, I'd just never been in a year and a half relationship before. And particularly, I've never really been in a relationship with someone who I felt like was um, smarter than me and more well-read and uh, more articulate. Like that, not that I have like a high uh, level of self, you know, worth, like, like what I think, I'm, you know, I'm so smart, I'm so special, no. But she genuinely has a faster processor. Not that she's perfect, but she's amazing in that sense. And that really pushed me in a lot of ways, and it grew, and I, I, I don't know, it was really great, but having that pulled away was, it really hurt, like, long, like, oh my god. And now that I've had that experience, I don't know that I'm, I cannot ever, as freely let people into that level of connection because man
Man, that sucked. That's that's a lot. That's a lot to ask for for one person to go to another and say, "I want to be the closest ever, ever," and then you're together like that. If you're not up to a certain standard in like having your life together, like things that will end up inevitably causing this to not work in the future, then I don't want to let people in that close if you're not there. And that's just me personally, maybe that's rude, but I, I don't, like that's self-preservation for me at that point. Like, I really care about people when I let them in to that level. I really trust and respect them and love them. And I don't want to have to go through pain, or if I am going to go through it, that's fine. Like, I accept that's part of it, and I'm not gonna, like, shut off from everyone ever, but I do want to acknowledge that that's... that's a lot. So, you better be really fucking committed. You better be just as much involved, and I have to feel completely comfortable in every way and not feel like there's any doubt that you're serious about this, because that's... that's... Oof. I wonder about that too, like, what is the culture of um, guys just trying to sleep with a bunch of women, what does that do? Because I feel like a lot of women also, because of the fact that if you're dating somebody, you have sex, oh, like, what if you get pregnant? Like, that's a really long commitment, like, you have to go through something, like a nine month process, and then the rest of your life if you end up having the baby, if nothing happens. So. Ooh, that's gotta change your mindset. Because, like, if you're a guy, especially, you know, 20 years ago, you could pretty much uh, sleep with someone and get them pregnant and leave, and, like, you could plausibly get away with that. They didn't have the internet, they didn't have ways to track people. You could just leave the country. Like, oh, well, now that lady's fucked. <laughs> fucked. Uh, more importantly, I feel like that, that, that adds another level that women. Uh, at least many women, I'm sure, have that on their mind, it, it, even if it's, whether it's a mental thing, whether it's hormonal, whether it's whatever, like, I think a lot of women take that into consideration, and I grew up around mostly women, like, three sisters, uh, my mom, uh, my dad was in Kansas, and I wasn't, so unless I was on vacation seeing him, which is really what it was, it was vacation to see my father. <laughs> it's kind of a weird concept. Um, so then... You know, I go see my mom, or I'm with my mom, like, it was her and I, sort of, like, she's the only person that's really been there, because we moved and shit, I don't know. All I know is that that made a difference to me. Of some kind, I know. But again, I don't want to be a victim of that. I want to define what I want my life to be, rather than be reactive to other people or the circumstances of my life. I want to be proactive and choose what I want my life to be. So I'm going to try and work to clearly define what that is so that I have a picture, a visualization, something I can envision and work toward and decide if my everyday actions in the present are, are uh, uh, leading me toward that goal, that vision, that, that, that aspiration, or are they a divergent? Are they taking me away from it? The main point of this entire thing is that I think what I've learned is that relationships should be sane. Like, if you're good friends with somebody for a couple years, and then you get a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, that boyfriend or girlfriend should not be in any way, shape, or form above that friend that you invested all this time in and who's invested in you and like, you've left, like your, your family. Then this new person comes along, which statistically will be gone eventually. Like whether it's you know a few months, a few weeks, maybe a couple years, like whatever. But your best friend's been there for years, and you're gonna let this new person be above them? No, that's that's not. That doesn't make sense. I feel like the new person person is the one that should have to work to want to be in this group. So. And I've never felt like... I don't know. I don't really know how to go about that from my end, but I do know that when it comes to relationships of all types, that's kind of how I'm starting to look at it. And I used to be, you know, like, oh, you let them in. I 
and then, oh, now it's just us. We're a thing. And you're just kind of like, and your other friends are over there. That's, that's not a good way. Like, not only is that kind of, not only disrespectful, but kind of cruel to your friends that you've, like, been there. Unless you guys just have that kind of come and go relationship, but, like, why would you want to be friends with somebody who will just drop you on the head, on the, drop you on a dime to go be with someone just because they're having sex? Like, that. Sex is great, don't get me wrong. Um, but that doesn't mean you're now above my friends. They're the ones keeping me sane. They're the ones keeping on top of me and making sure I'm not fucking up, making sure that like I'm not doing other people wrong, that I'm, I'm able to be the best version of myself because I'm able to comfortably be myself and know that my friends will tell me if I'm not. Which kind of gives you confidence. But if you're willing to put them below this new person you're dating, like, oh, it's not gonna work out well. At least not if you have friends like my friends. Like, anyway, this is getting really long, but that's that. Relationships. I. Uh, what do you discern from it? I don't know. What do you. What do you take from relationships? What do you give? At what point is a friendship and a dating like more of that kind of relationship? Relationship. Um, what's what? What should be the difference? Is it just different for everybody? I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you? How do you feel about friendships and dating and um, maybe your perspective? If you live in suburbia, if you live in the country, if you live in the city, how does that change? Like, for example, the city has so many more people that I think you can really afford to be a lot more picky about who you let in your life, which is great. But when you're in the country, like, that's just not the case. So do you lower your own standards for other people? Do you, do you still have high ones and then just maybe you end up with not very many friends? I don't know. How does it work? How is it for you? What is your experience? Because I have a little bit of all these things, but I don't have all of any of them because I've been in so many different ones. I just haven't been able to put the time in. Um, and same thing with like, if you're on a team, like, I don't know, maybe you're a fireman, maybe you play a sport, maybe whatever, activist group, uh, volunteer thing. But what do you, how does that change? Like, how do you develop those relationships? How do you maintain them? Uh, I would love to hear some, uh, just like a, a video response, like we'll have a conversation about this. I think it's important. Um, okay, well, talk to you later.